Hallelujah. We're thankful for His grace today. Just lift your hands toward Him right now as we pray together. Come on. Let's give thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Praise Jesus. the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Lord Jesus, we are thankful today. Thankful for your grace. For Lord, we all need your grace in this moment. We need your love. We need your direction. We need your understanding. We need your strength and power in our lives, Lord, that we can live holy for you in this moment. Lord Jesus, we recognize each one of us in ourselves, our weaknesses. But Lord, your word assures us that in our weakness, you are made strong. And Father, we stand today on that strength. We stand upon the power of your word today. We stand with thanksgiving today that by your grace, we are covered by your grace. Oh God. Lord, you know every person's life that's in this room this morning. You know every detail, every circumstance, every situation, everything that they are facing, Lord. The problems, and Lord, you know well the victories. Father, I pray in Jesus' name today that your spirit will move in this place and that every person in this room will be touched and empowered and set free by your Spirit. Every person in this room today will recognize that, Lord, you have victory for their life. And they are covered. Covered by your grace. Oh, God, for those that would need a touch in their body today, Lord, would you touch them right now? Right now, we rebuke the sickness, the pain, and the disease. Right now, in the name of Jesus. And we stand in faith, believing that, Lord, you will raise up a new standard of health for those that are needing it today. For those that are looking for direction in their lives, Lord, they're, they're struggling, they're looking for employment, or they're looking for, for documents, or they're looking for uh, things that, Lord, just seemingly are not, not coming in. Father, you know exactly what their circumstance and situation is. And Lord, you can put those things together in a moment, Lord, by the moving of your Spirit. You can unite those situations with the proper people, Lord, that will make it happen, Lord, and will become a victory instead of something that is a hindrance. Lord, there are those in this room today that need provision. They need financial provision. Lord, you are a provider. You are Jehovah Jireh. And Lord, we don't stand today crying out in need. We stand today in the victory that says we know, we know you will provide. You will meet every need, Lord, according with your riches in glory. So, Father, right now, help those in need to recognize that the answer's coming. The answer's coming. In Jesus' name. And Lord, if anyone is here today in spiritual need, we recognize that that is the most important aspect of our lives because it is the Spirit, Lord, that lives on for all of eternity. If there be those here today whose heart is not right with you, Lord, they've never given their lives to you, or maybe they have and they've fallen by the wayside in their spirit, Lord, they become discouraged. Lord, I 
pray that before this day is over, they will be united with you. They will be strong in the power of your might. And they will in faith receive everything they need to stand in the victory that you have prepared for their lives. Lord, touch your people today. Touch your people, Lord. Equip us, mold us, and make us into instruments of blessing to those around us. Let the world see our love and the power of God in our lives. Lord, we thank you for it. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I promise we won't throw anything at you. <laughs> and it's our 
custom to ask you to introduce yourself and tell us the country from which you come from, okay? So let's start here with you. Praise the Lord. Yeah. We got to meet her the other day. Some of us knew her and her family were here. And it's so happy. we're so happy you're here again today. And we pray God's going to bless you. Good, good, good. All right, and you? And David and Thea, my wife, we are honeymoon. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. From Holland. From Holland. From Holland. From Holland. From Holland. I'm sorry. Okay, I didn't get that. Well, we always love to have honeymooners here at ICS, and uh, we do on a frequent basis, and it's always a joy and a, and a privilege. When, how long have you been married? Uh, eight days. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And, and just remain standing in a minute. I'm going to introduce the other one here, and then before we're seated, we always love to pray a prayer blessing over you and your newfound life together. So we'll do that in just a moment. Over here, sir. I'm Jonathan from Nigeria. John from Nigeria. Praise God. We're glad that he is here and uh, trusting God to bless him richly and in abundance. Anyone else? I miss anyone? Oh, yes, please. I'm Melanie from Canada. Melanie? Well, we are delighted to have each one of you here today. If you haven't filled out a visitor's uh, contact card, uh, please make sure you get one of those and do so before uh, you uh, leave the service today. Uh, we would love to have a record of your visit and at least your email address because we want to send you something special in, in honor of your being with us. So welcome to ICF. Know we are here for you. And we want to bless you in any way possible. And we thank you for your time. Welcome to ICF Florence this week. My name is Lynn Walton. And we are really excited to have you here. Whether you're joining us physically at Florence or online through our website at icfflorence.com. Welcome to the family. At ICF, we are all about God's word is our first and final authority. We are spirit-led, committed to prayer, diversity and unity, and community. We're also about training and equipping and passionately pursuing God. If this is your first time here at ICF, please head out after service to the foyer and fill out our connection card. We would love to make you feel at home as a part of the ICF family. Come on out on Thursday nights for prayer and praise. This is where we do just that. It is a night dedicated to praying together and praising the Lord. So come join us from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. You won't want to miss out. Every Tuesday night, we will have our new college youth group called United. There will be food, games, worship, and more. For more information, you can follow their Instagram at ICF United. Introducing our new children's program called JAM, Jesus and Me. JAM will meet every Sunday morning after worship during the main service. JAM is for the ages 3 to 10 years old and includes many activities and fun and engaging Bible lessons that will help them grow in their faith and develop a relationship with Jesus Christ. Sunday will be every fourth Sunday of the month. This is when we will gather together around the Lord's table and remember and celebrate our salvation. The ICF Florence Ministry Center is open for you every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday from 1 to 4 p.m. Please feel free to stop by for advice, prayer, a quiet place, or anything you need. Praise the Lord. Well, today we're going to conclude the message that we have been ministering upon the last two weeks, the last two Sundays. We have been talking about a sermon or a message that I entitled, The Lord of the Little. 
the Lord of the little. That sounds almost strange because when I think of God, I think of a big God. But I want us to understand there's more in the personality of the Lord and His desire and His ministry to our lives than just the big. Than just the big. He is a God of all things. He is a God who ministers to our lives in completeness. And let's be honest, there are days that, at least for me, I don't feel very big. And there's a lot of things that I need in my life every day that compared to many, seem pretty small. But they're just as important. They're just as important as anyone else's need. No matter how we rate it. You know, I really, I have come to believe that I don't believe God has a rating system for the needs in our life. There's not a priority system. He doesn't say, well, today uh, uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to minister to Dennis over here because he's got a pretty big need today. But, but you know, uh, Eno over here, yes, it's kind of pissed stuff. You know, no big deal. So we'll get to that in a day or two. He doesn't do it like that. Every need, every need is just as important to him as the next. And what's even better is he doesn't have to prioritize them because he can meet them all in an instant. Yes. Amen. He doesn't have to do the line it up. And, you know, we have to prioritize things sometimes. Amen? Amen? At least I do. And, you know, I can get this done today and I probably should do this first because this over here can wait a day or two and I can't get it up. God doesn't have to do that. He can do it all. And I'm so, so thankful for that. So, we've talked, last week we talked about the God of little faith. Remember that? The God of little faith. And if you weren't here and you have a desire to pick up our services, they are on our website. We put the last three services on the web every week. So, you can actually, as of later today, you will be able to pick up all three Sermons on this of this parts of this particular message that we've been giving, going clear on back to two weeks ago. But today we're going to take verses 39 through 44, and we're going to speak about another part of this particular passage and what we're seeing here. Let's just uh, let's pick this up here right at the top, and it says, "Then Jesus." directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green ground. Now that, I, when, I, when I read that particular rendition, I thought, green grass? I thought it was a hot, dry desert. Anyhow, uh, green grass sounds good. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up the twelve baskets of broken pieces of bread and fish. And the number of the men who had eaten was five thousand. Now, if you take into account there were more there than men, <coughs> some, some scholars have determined that there could be as many as 20,000 people with children, women, and men in that particular day in this situation. That's a lot of people. That's the size of a soccer stadium group. And they don't even have a snack stand. I mean, we're talking about a lot of people. A lot of situations. And in this particular part of the passage today, I've entitled this particular section to say He is the Lord of little food. He's the Lord of little food. 
Now, Dominic over here doesn't like me to say that because he doesn't like little food. He likes big food. <laughs> Hang on. It's coming. <laughs> We've talked a lot about the display of their faithfulness. Faithlessness, I'm sorry, in this particular message already. And in this particular passage, in this part of the story, Jesus asked his men how much food they had. How much? And in verse 38, he told them, he says, go find out how much. They responded, well, you know, we don't know. I mean, they've been making this case about we need to send the people home. You've been preaching a long time, and they're exhausted, and they're hungry, and there's no Burger King on the corner. So they need to go find food. They need to go eat. And they knew there just wasn't any provision. And so he said, go find out. Now we know in John's account that all the food that was available in that vast crowd of people was the small lunch of a young boy. A small portion. All he had was five loaves and two fish. Now, let me help you get a grip on this. These loaves were not big Italian loaves of bread. We're not talking an exhaustive loaf of bread. We're talking about something that would be compared probably more like a flat, small biscuit. Something like you can pick up a lot of times in some of the the bars and the pasticherias and different things like that around here. The, the, the Pane shops. It's, it's, a, it's a small type of thing. We're talking five, five what they would call loaves of bread that are the size of a biscuit, what we think of as a biscuit. And it's flat. So it's not like it's a lot of food. And then we're talking about two fish. These fish were not trophy bass. They weren't 700 pound yellowfin tunas. We're talking something the size of a sardine. A little salted fish of the day. Something very tiny. Something that Dominique would eat and say, I thought you were going to give me some fish. <coughs> Difficult. Not big. We're talking a small lunch for a small boy. Not a feast. So when the disciples returned to Jesus with this small amount, Andrew expressed even more doubt this time. He says, what are they among so many? What is this little lunch going to do for this vast crowd of thousands? The disciples, they sized up the situation. They looked around. They looked at the provisions. And it didn't take them long to decide there's not enough here to go around. There's not enough here to feed me, much less all these people. <clears throat> From a human perspective, they were exactly correct. In verse 39, he commands the people to sit down. Some versions say in companies. <coughs> And that word literally means in rows, like vegetables in a garden. Now, a lot of you understand and have heard them tease me about the fact that I'm not a big vegetable person. So as I thought about this, I thought, no, nah, I don't like that description. So I thought, you know what? When cows come home to milk at night, they come in rows. So... Let's say he set them down in robes like cows coming home to be milked. 
No, I know that. That's that's just you know. vegetables in a garden. All Jesus was doing was he was wanting them to sit down in orderly rows, kind of like we have here this morning. Here's a row, another row, another row. And can you imagine with me what that must have looked like? Here's all these people all sitting down in a row in all of their colorful garments. And they probably looked a lot like a garden in full bloom. With all of the colors and all the descriptions that you could put on there. Now that, that little tidbit of information doesn't add a whole lot to our understanding of the text, but it does remind us that God is a God of order. He is a God of order. Orderly things. He does things in an orderly way. He is not the God of chaos. He is not the God of confusion. What He does, He does well. He does in an orderly way. And Jesus takes these five loaves and these two little fish and He lifts His face toward heaven and He blesses the food. Now, understand me. Jesus was not in any way upset that the provisions are so small. He's not bothered by this small amount of food. These five little pieces of bread and these two small fish. He simply took what was given to him and he began to break it. He blessed it and he began to break it. Now the word break and give are important here in this passage. They indicate that he kept on breaking and he kept on giving. Think about that. He kept on, he kept on, and he kept on. Jesus took those little biscuits and those little sardine-sized fish and they were multiplied barely in his, in his hand. In his hands, they were multiplied. He just kept on breaking them. And he just kept on giving his disciples. And the loaves and the fish kept on multiplying. Jesus exercised some very creative power to accomplish this particular miracle. To feed 5,000 men plus women and children it would have required them to empty their baskets and return to Jesus for refills. Over and over and over again. And every time they came back, they probably expected to find that Jesus was going to be sitting there saying, I've run out of food. There is no more. That's all there is. But He never did. He never ran out. He kept breaking and he kept giving until every person in that crowd had no more desire to eat. I'm sure there were people in that crowd that could eat a lot. They were satisfied. There were some that probably didn't eat a whole lot. They were satisfied. Everyone was satisfied and had all that they wanted to eat. And when the disciples took up the leftovers, there were 12 baskets full, one for every doubting disciple. Have you ever thought about that? 12. 12 baskets full of scraps of throwaway. And every person was satisfied. I can't. You know, when I think about this, I how did 12 guys distribute that much food to that many people? But they did. And all of these people were more than amply satisfied. All I'm trying to get you to see today is that the Lord is more than enough. Amen. He's more than enough. He, take the little that you give Him and he can do miracles with us. He can take the effort that you put in and he can do great things with it. 
He can take what you do for ministry and He can make that ministry something more powerful than you ever dreamed it to be. He can take your offerings. I'm talking when I say offerings, I'm talking above and beyond what we would consider to be the tithe. He can take those offerings and he can multiply them and use them to meet every need. Jesus is more than enough, church. He can take the little that you give him and he can do miracles with it. Now, I want to be careful here because I know how people think sometimes. They think, well, if he doesn't need much, then I don't have to worry about doing too much and he'll take it and make it something great. And we end up getting into this spirit of giving God the leftovers. No, that's not what I'm trying to advocate here. We should be giving God our very best. And everything we say, everything we do, every act of ministry, every kindness we perform, everything we give monetarily, or in another way, it ought to be the best we have to give the Lord. He's worthy of that. He gave everything for you. So don't ever get in a position where you think, well, you know, I don't have to do very much because God can take this away. No. You give God your best. And then see what He does. Give it your best. That mother who packed that little lunch that day, I'm sure had no idea that it would be used to feed thousands of people. She probably thought, I don't know whether this is enough for little Johnny or not. But it's all I got. And yet look at what it did. Look at how far it went in the hands of Jesus. Jesus just took what was available and He multiplied it. He did it for His glory and He's still doing the same thing today. He takes what is available and He makes it something special. Something powerful. Something wonderful. Something genuine. I love to see what takes place when people give what they have. They do what they can do. And I know the enemy sets on our shoulders oftentimes and says, ha, ah, you don't need to do that. I mean, it doesn't, that's nothing. I mean, if you can't do something of substance and substantially, then, you know, you, don't, you shouldn't just do that. It's, it's, it's pitiful. I... I was so blessed this morning with, with Ida bringing her bassoon and playing her bassoon. Wow. Yeah. I fully anticipate that she'll speak to me after service and say, next week I expect you to have tails and tucks on. That was wonderful. Thank you. Now, a lot of people would have said, you know, Where's the rest of the orchestra? If you, if you can't have a few violins and a few cellos and, and a bassoon and a clarinet and a trombone, of course a trombone, that's my instrument, and other things, you know, there's no point in you doing that. No. She gave what she had to give, and God used her, Amen. and He blessed us yeah. and the recipient of it. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. See, that's the way things are supposed to work. We give what we have to give. And God multiplies it. And He uses it. Amen. He uses it for His glory. He can amaze us. And He does. When we give what we have to give, and watch what He does. <laughs> When this situation arose, the question from Jesus was, how are we going to handle this? And there were four responses to that question. First, from verse 35 through 36, let's get rid of the problem. Remember? Send them away! Send them away. Let them go find a, a bar. Or... 
a restaurant. They may have to walk 10 miles, but at least they'll get fed. Send them away. There's nothing here. But yet they've got to feed. Secondly, there was the thought of raising more money. <laughs> you know, we're going to try to do this food thing. Man, we we got to have a whole lot more than what we got. We're going to have to raise money. Thirdly, we have a little, but it will never be enough. You ever felt that way? I've got a little, but it's sure not going to do what needs to be done. And fourth, let Jesus have it. Let Jesus have it. Whatever it is, no matter how little or how big, let Jesus have it. And see what he can do. Church, if you could ever learn to bring your little to Jesus and let him have it, he can use it in a great way for his glory. It's when people hang on to it because they're convinced it's not significant and of no real meaning or no purpose that it gets to be a problem. says watch you move mountains with it. Bring it. Bring your little testimony. And watch that testimony impact people and cause them to give their lives to Jesus Christ. Bring your little abilities to Him. Watch how He can use it. He can take your little ability and he can make amazing things be accomplished from it. Amen. He specializes in using small things to amaze people and to reveal his glory. He loves to do that. He loves to do it. He wants to do it in your life. He wants to do it in the lives of those around you. As an example, he used the cry of a little baby to bring peace to Abraham. He used a little stick in the hand of Moses to part the Red Sea and deliver his people from Pharaoh. He used a little boy named David who slung a little stone in a small slingshot to remove a big giant. He used a little piece of bread called manna to feed the people for 40 years. He used a little widow with a little meal and a little oil to take care of a man of God. He loves to use little things and make something great out of them. He used a little girl named Mary to bring a little baby into the world who would grow up and die on a little cross on a little hill in a little country called Israel. Think of it. But in his death, he would provide salvation for all who would receive it. Can you say amen? Amen. And he can do that. Who knows what he will do with your little if you can just get it into his hands. Just get it into the hands 
of the Lord. I wonder how many of you today are wondering and thinking right now, do I have some little something that I need to bring to Jesus today? Something that He can use and then watch Him transform it into a lot. His specialty. Let me make something clear here. Jesus could have fed the multitudes with nothing. He didn't need five small loaves and two fish. He could have made bread and fish float down from the sky with purple parachutes bringing them under release <laughs> if he wanted to. Man. He didn't have to do it that way. But he chose to. He chose to use what was given to him for his glory. <coughs> and that's what he wants to do in our lives. He wants to take what you will give to Him and make it something powerful and use it for His glory. Don't let the enemy convince you that what you have to give is not significant because in the hands of God, it can do all things for His glory. Bring your little. Place it in the hands of Jesus. He will take it and use it in ways that you cannot even imagine right now. As hard as you might try. He can make it more. Bring your little talent. Bring your abilities. Watch how God can use it. And accomplish great things for His glory. Bring your little self and see how God can use you for something significant. God specializes in taking these frail clay bodies and using them for His glory. Don't you listen to the voice of the enemy that will tell you, ah, ah, who do you think you are? You're nothing. Jesus is not going to use you for anything of substance. Don't even go there. <laughs> this past week, the, the world has been mourning the passing of a great evangelist that touched all parts of this world. His name is Billy Graham. Amen. He was a man of humble beginnings and he was a humble man throughout his life. And yet he changed this world for the glory of God. <coughs> he touched people by the thousands with the message of Jesus. Now, a lot of people, including himself, could have stood back and said in the beginning, <coughs> who's this guy? What's he think he's going to accomplish? Or there could be some people today sitting back and saying, man, I'll never be a Billy Graham, so why even try? God wants to take what you have and He wants to show you what He can do with it. But He needs you to say, Lord, here it is. Here I am. Do with it as you will. Because when you do something with it, it'll be good. Bring your little self. Without the Lord, the reality is we're all just a bunch of crack pots. We're not going to hold anything of substance. It's all going to just ooze out. And it's going to be left empty. But with Him, we can be vessels of honor to the glory of God. That's what He wants to do. Get your little self 
into His hands today. <coughs> oh, there may be some breaking. You know, like the lows probably will be. There may be some reshaping, remolding, redoing type of thing. But when He gets done with it, wow. It's amazing what you will be. As I was reading some writings on this particular passage in Scripture, there were some liberal theologians that had looked at this passage and they had determined that it could not have happened like the Bible says that it happened. You know, it's always got to be somebody. And when you look at it in the natural, you say, yeah, this, this is not possible. One liberal commentator I read had an account that says it was some kind of an optical illusion. I know about you. I've seen, you know, some things that looked like they were and so forth. But I've never seen a big turkey in an optical illusion and walked away and felt full. <laughs> These people that says we're all satisfied. They were full. Come on. Optical illusions don't feed twenty thousand people. Another one says that when the people saw that the little boy was giving his lunch to Jesus, they were all moved with compassion, and so they gave all their lunches too, and there was enough for everybody to eat. Well, that was the case. What was the deal about to begin with? They had food. Tell them to have their own picnics. I can't get over the reality and the thought of why can't people accept the Word of God for what it is? We've always got to analyze it and tear it apart and reason it out and try to make it justifiable or say, well, no, that's some other something or something, some unjustifiable thing. We're always trying to decipher it and make it so instead of just sitting back and saying, it's the Word of God that is all I need to know. But in history, over and over again, that's the way it's been. But the reality is, no matter how hard man tries to destroy the Word, the Word is still alive and with us today. Jesus is the Lord of the little. He took a little... And he made a lot out of it. And he's still doing that today. He hasn't changed. He's the same. And if you have a little situation, you need to bring it to him now. Now is the time. Don't let the enemy convince you differently. Now is the time. If you are lost and you need to be saved, He will save you if you will come to Him and ask Him. He's not going to force it on you. He's not going to tell somebody else to force it on you. All He asks is that you come to Him and ask. He's done the hard part. All you have to do is ask and receive. If you walked away from Him, He can restore you to a place of fellowship with Him. But again, you have to ask. That's it. He can multiply your loaves and your fish if you'll put them in His hand. We're so busy trying to figure out how to do it ourselves that at best a lot of times the most we do is we've exhausted ourselves and run out of options and then we say, oh well, okay, I still got one more thing I can do, I can give it to Jesus. And the Word says we should give it to Him first. Think of all the work 
you'd save yourself. He can multiply what you have. Put it in His hand. He will use you in ways you never ever dreamed of if you will only give Him your little. What you have. We've got a lot of needs here in ICF Florence right now. We've got a lot of spaces to fill, a lot of areas of ministry. We desperately need people to help us with. Or we're going to have to set some things aside and say we don't have the ability to do it. I don't believe that's God's plan. I don't believe that's His desire. But we need people that will say, Pastor, Here's my little. I give it to the Lord. And I give it in service to Him. Use it for His glory. It means making Jesus become priority in our lives. Recognizing His Lordship over all of us who call Him. Lord. The whole point of this miracle that we've been talking about was not just to feed the multitude. The whole point was to teach those stubborn disciples that Jesus was more than sufficient for every circumstance and situation in life. And the lesson is still the same today. every one of us. He is more than sufficient to save. He's already provided that salvation. He's more than sufficient to forgive. <coughs> the enemy will tell you, oh, he'll never forgive that. You've messed up. You've gone too far. You blew it too many times. It's done. He's a liar. You come to Jesus with a repentant heart and spirit and ask His forgiveness and He'll change you. He'll forgive you. He's more than sufficient to take your little and give you a whole lot in return. That's our Lord. And all He asks is that we come to Him and put our little in His hands. This Lord of little. And then see what He'll do with it. I want you to think for a moment about your circumstances and your situation. There may be some here today that are saying, you know what, I've been holding on to this little because I didn't think it meant a whole lot. I didn't think it was significant. I didn't think it was sufficient. It was like five little loaves and two fish. Couldn't go very far. But you see, the fallacy of that is you didn't take a step of faith and put it in the hands of the Lord. You have choices to make this side of eternity. <clears throat> and if Jesus is Lord of your life, <clears throat> one of those choices is, here it is, Lord. I give it to you. And I expect you to make great things out of it for your glory and for your purpose. If you've never received Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, you've probably bought into a lot of, a lot of thoughts, a lot of ideas, and most of all, the enemy has convinced you somehow that that's not something that's for you, or you need that, or doesn't really exist, or the list can go on and on. Let me tell you something. Jesus went to the cross of Calvary. 
and shed his blood that you might be set free and spend eternity with him. <clears throat> you, don't have, <clears throat> you don't have to work to earn it. You could earn it no matter how hard you try. But the beauty is you don't have to even go there. All you have to do is accept the gift. <clears throat> he paid the price and he gives the gift to anyone who will say, here I am. Go put it right there. Right there. If you've never done that, you have no idea of the beauty and the wonder and the freedom and the glory that comes when you take that in your hand and receive it in Jesus' name. Some of you have messed up. You've fallen back. You've fallen. Your spiritual life is not anywhere close to what it should have been or was in the beginning when you first gave your heart to the Lord. You know what? Most people most people go through some of those periods. That doesn't excuse it. It simply says we all struggle at some point in our life with our spiritual walk. But hear me once again. Don't give up. Don't let the enemy convince you that it's a better deal to do You've gone way past this ability to be received and forgiven. Jesus has more forgiveness in his heart for you than anything else. <clears throat> All he asks is that you come to him and give him your living. Don't give him your little excuses. Because he knows about those. Give him your heart and your life. And let him redo it. For his glory. Let me ask you to do this right now. Is there anyone here <coughs> that has never received <coughs> Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? You've never accepted His forgiveness. And the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart right now. And you want your life changed. You want to find out what it is to let Jesus take your little and make it something wonderful. If there's someone here that has never done that before, I'm going to ask you to Take a bold stand for the Lord and just simply that. We just stand your feet so we can pray for you right now. Is there anyone? Never given their heart to the Lord. But today is your day of salvation. Secondly, is there anyone here that has done that? But you have to be honest and say, you know what? I'm not really walking with the Lord right now. The way I should be. I've fallen short. I've messed up in some areas. I'm not comfortable with that. And I need His forgiveness. And I need Him to strengthen me and set me free to take my little once again and make it something wonderful for His glory. Remember what I said earlier? Almost all of us could probably say yes to that. So don't let the enemy convince you that you're the only one or that there's shame upon you. If you'd like to get reconnected where you need to be with the Lord again. Would you stand right now? Thank you. Are there others? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. I think there's some more. Yes. The enemy will tell you, oh, you want to be there right now? You don't need to worry about that. you got lots of time. You may not have the next 30 seconds. 
Why would you want to spend 30 seconds without the love of Jesus in your life? Anyone else?
And it's never easy, Lord, to admit to our Savior that we've held on to things that we shouldn't hold on to. <clears throat> Proclaim and profess faith. Sometimes our faith is so small. Sometimes it's the size of a little loaf and a little fish. And all you're saying to us is, give it to me. Let me show you what I can do with it. Let me show you. Good things in store. Lord, bless today these that are standing here and help them to understand that what they're saying to you right now is something that you take seriously. Because, Lord, you want them to have it all. So no, no taking it back. Today, we're making a new profession of our faith in you, Lord. 